most of these big organizations have IoT groups. Everyone is doing the exact same architecture that is going to fail. You know, our roadmaps got us digitally transforming in 12 years. You know, we can't wait 12 years. The reason I'm putting this in this session is because this has come up quite a bit in the last month in conversations we've been having with several of our clients. Okay. We're, right now we're working with a lot of really huge companies. And as we're going through like digital transformation maturity assessments with them, you know, part of what we do during the maturity assessment is we're evaluating five core sectors of the business. So there are five main groups we meet with. From there, we have breakout sessions with the subgroups. We look at all their different platforms, all that kind of stuff. Here's something that's been happening very often. Most of these big organizations have IoT groups, okay? They've got big data group. They've got a data group, data enablement. They got all that stuff they've, and they've got IoT groups. Everyone is doing the exact same architecture that is going to fail, okay? We're getting involved at the very beginning. You know, maybe they're a year in, maybe they're two years in. They've had a couple of small, isolated, solution-centered wins, but they can't scale. And that's the reason we're coming in. They're like, why is it, you know, our roadmaps got us digitally transforming in 12 years. You know, we can't wait 12 years. So what's the problem here? Here's the problem, if you guys want to know, and, and so that you can identify it. On the left-hand side here is what most organizations are doing on some level, okay? They're using what is known as a solution-centered approach, which you guys have heard. Another term that you might hear is the digital thread, all right? What is the digital thread? It's very simple. For operational data, OT, digital thread is basically an object that originates on the edge. That object could be something like a valve. It doesn't even have to be an object. It could just be a single data point, right? You have a digital thread for that data point. But basically, something originates on the edge, and what they do is they try to get it as fast as they can into a data lake, okay? So they get many digital threads that originate on the edge. I've got all these various sensors. These sensors all talk to different PLCs. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a digital thread that is threading that event from the PLC into a data lake as quickly as I possibly can. This data lake is their, what they hope to be their uh, single source of truth. I may have it streaming directly into the data lake, that data thread, that, that digital thread from this sensor all the way into the data lake, or I may, maybe I've got a, an OPC server that is collecting data from a couple of PLCs, and then I've got the OPC server or like a data collector PLC, you know, streaming those digital threads into the data lake. Then what they do is they put a layer on top of the data lake. So when they call, they talk about IoT, okay? What they'll do is they'll put another layer right on top of the data lake that extracts the data. Okay, so they've got teams that they have teams that decide, you know, who gets access to what data and that kind of stuff. And then what they do is they'll put a, a layer on top of it where we do analysis, post processing. We'll pull that data from the sensors. We'll do some post processing. And then on top of that, they will have a visualization layer, you know, Power BI, ThingWorks you name it, whatever. And then the human being, the human being is unlocking the data from that, that visualization layer. Okay. That, so that's the person. All right. Here, here's the problem with this. This is, if you're an organization and you see this, this is, this looks very similar to what you're doing. Listen, it's not going to work guys. Okay. It's, it's not your, here's why it's not going to work. You're not normalizing your data. You're not abstracting your data until you get to that analysis engine. You have no standard for the data. You have gaps in the data. Why? Because there's data and information that's created at every other layer in the stack that you can't account for. There are literally gaps everywhere, okay? You have capability gaps. That is, there are features you cannot build in this visualization layer. There are things you need that you can't build using Power BI or ThingWorks or some other IoT visualization layer. This is expensive to do, okay? There's a lot of people involved. It's expensive to do. So therefore, there are a lot of, there's a lot of potential value you never capture or realize because the ROI isn't there. The problem is, is that the, the cost is not absolute. It doesn't have to be that expensive. So, you, you have high value targets 
you know, you have mid value targets, you have low value targets. This approach here only is going to allow, it's going to provide some value, but it's only going to provide value to the high value targets. Okay. You're creating new data silos by doing this. You don't make the John Sindrich alone mentioned that he, the, the data goes somewhere, but he, either it doesn't go there or he's not allowed to get it. Okay. You're creating a new silo, right? And the biggest thing is the biggest problem with this uh, architecture, the digital thread, is that you do, it doesn't unlock innovation on the plant floor. And what do I mean by that? We don't make it easy for people to get access to the data information that they need, when they need it, where they need it, and in the form they need it. And those requirements may change based on an idea they came up with, all right? On the fly. I've come up with an idea to innovate, I need to test. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna innovate and test that idea because the value isn't high enough. There's two types of downtime, right? Two, you know, you have long downtime, cataclysmic failures where a machine is down for hours and hours and hours, and then you have micro stops, okay? Micro stops are the machine may stop for five seconds and restart, it may stop for 15 seconds and restart, okay? You have a lot more micro stops than you do cataclysmic failures. And if you add up all of the micro stops, they will far out, outweigh the total number of major downtime events you've ever had. If you add up all the major downtime events in minutes and then add up all the micro stops, the micro stops far outweigh the, the major downtime events. But on face value, a micro stop in MES is not a high value target. When I look at just the, the five seconds I lost, or the 15 seconds I lost, I, that doesn't look like high value to me. But I could create it, I could innovate if I have the ability. I could innovate an idea to eliminate that 15 seconds of downtime times a thousand if only given the opportunity. That's called unlocking potential on the plant floor. One of the problems with this digital threat approach is that it is absolute, okay? It is absolute. And, and it, it, it does not unlock innovation on the plant floor. It only lets you go after big, you know, high dollar, high dollar items. This is what we do. So what we're talking about is the technology driven approach. This is what we teach to everyone. Everyone is learning this. So instead of taking a digital thread from the edge and discreetly mapping it into a data lake and making assumptions about how the data will be consumed and then not unlocking that data, you know, Instead of taking this approach, what we do is we treat every layer of the business as a node in an ecosystem. And we use a unified namespace in order to make sure that we have no gaps, right? So we use a unified namespace where the PLC publishes into a specific location in the namespace, HMI, et cetera, all right? In, in MES systems, what most customers want to go after is the really big long downtime events. They want to know what the long ones were. A bearing went bad, the machine was down for six hours. But your real problem is not those big, huge cataclysmic events. They're the little tiny ones, the little tiny micro The ones that management can't see. That's right, 12 seconds here, 25 seconds there. What you, Mario, who's an MES guy like me, he knows that the real value, if you want to capture real value, you really want to, capture additional value by leveraging MES, you capture it not by analyzing the big, huge cataclysmic event, but by having visibility to little tiny ones that add up over time. That's where the value comes from that they're not even aware of. That was my point. I was looking for backing from other MES folks that yes, it isn't always the high value item, yet the, the digital thread, this digital thread architecture only targets high value stuff. Why? because it's too expensive to do anything else. Mm. So the approach that we take, the approach we take with the unified it's namespace- like an inside out approach. That's right. We treat everything as a node in an ecosystem, edge driven, report by exception, lightweight, open architecture. So what does techno is technology driven give us? If solution centered gives us no normalization, no abstraction, no standard, data gaps, capability gaps, only high value targo targets, new data silos, and it doesn't allow you to unlock innovation on the plant floor, technology-driven gives you normalized data that's abstracted, standardized, with no gaps or nearly no gaps. The gaps you're going to have are only in the data where, they don't, where the technology doesn't meet your minimum technical requirements, right? No capability gaps. 
It's going to include mid and low level value targets, right? What is a target? It's a potential project, a potential solution you could develop in the ecosystem. No new data silo. In fact, you're unifying all the data into one big massive silo and you have standardized and custom innovation is unlocked on the plant floor. So standardized means the same stuff that you, this is standardized. The stuff you would build using a digital thread that is standardized solutions. The stuff that you would build on the plant floor to test a John Sindrich idea, that is a custom solution. He gets he he has access to the data, he has access to the namespace, he can develop a solution and test it, and then if the business decides that that is going to provide enough value, you can scale it up the business and apply it in other places. That is what we do here. Right? Everything that we're teaching is centered around you know, I mean, doing this part, everything that we're teaching is centered around scalability. It's, it's all centered around solving problems. It's all centered around helping manufacturers do more with less, not just doing more with less for high value targets, but doing more for more for less in general across the board and unlocking From the potential, ground up, right? Unlocking potential all across the plant floor. When we're democratizing when innovation. That's right. So when you see this, if you're Michael Dowdell or you're Mario or you're any of the other guys in the in the in the gang, and you see this architecture, which you're going to see, believe me. I mean, in the last year, I have I've I've personally consulted for like two dozen major global 100 Fortune 500 companies, huge manufacturers. Every single one of them either has no plan, or they have this plan. None of them have this plan. And the reason that they brought us in is because they got a couple of wins doing it this way and then realized they had capability gaps, data gaps, no standards. They created new, high, new silos and it's too expensive to do this for all the basic stuff that you wanna do on the plant floor. Like something simple like, I wanna be able to compare downtime across four different machines in, in four different areas that are all from the same manufacturer. I can't even get access to that. I can't put it together. All right, off my sofa. Mm, that was good. That was really good. <laughs>